Well, hello and welcome. So today I have decided to hop aboard the card review bandwagon and offer my two cents on some of the cards that have been revealed to us thus far for the Journey to Angoro expansion, with a particular interest towards the notion of manliness, because I feel that this is something that has been sorely neglected by the Hearthstone devs. So if anyone has Ben Broad's email address, please swing him a cheeky link to this video. Okay, okay. Now I'll be using a very complicated mathematical algorithm to rate each card on a scale from 1 to 10, where 1 is approximately equivalent to a teaspoon of Johnson's baby shampoo, and 10 is approximately equivalent to Clint Eastwood's eyebrows. Now I don't have an enormous amount of time. There are some very, very important documents that I have to fap to later today. So I'm only going to be reviewing the classes that are manly. So if you see that your class is not reviewed throughout the course of this video, just consider it to be literally unplayable. Okay, moving swiftly along to the warrior class. The first card we have here is King Mosh, the new legendary. Now, Execute is worth 2 mana, so if your opponent has a full board, then this is a 23 mana card for 9 mana. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, it is. Maths never lies. Now, you might be saying to yourself, but wait a minute, Tetrahedron, what if it kills your own minions? That could add up to a whopping 35 mana worth of value. Well, you would be right, except you're an idiot because real manly decks don't run minions. They do all the damage direct from the face. So given the unprecedented value of this card, as well as the fact that it kills a bunch of shit, it gets a manliness rating of 10 out of 10, because there's nothing more manly than mass murder. Next we have Tar Lord. This card has Taunt and Taunt is for sissies. Manliness rating 1 out of 10. Molten Blade. Now, way back in Whispers of the Old Gods, I happened to open Shifter Zerus in a pack. And try as I might, I was unable to make it either good or fun. So I disenchanted it to help craft my prized golden yog. Molten Blade is very different to Shift to Zerus, however. Firstly, because it's a weapon. And secondly, because it's red as fuck. Now, I don't think I need to tell you again why red is the manliest color. But just in case some of you are wondering, I'll say it involves tomatoes, blood, and the Roman Empire. The fact that Molten Blade is a weapon is, of course, extremely significant, as weapons allow you to beat the shit out of your opponent with your face, the manliest action possible in Hearthstone. And the fact that it becomes a random weapon even gives it added versatility. Why play only a Cursed Blade or Ogre Warmall when you can have a quantum superposition of both right here in one card? Overall manliness rating, 7 out of 10 which can be increased to 10 out of 10 if you use this weapon untransformed to lethal your opponent. Next up we have Cornered Sentry. Has Taunt, Taunt is for Sissies, 1 out of 10. Alright, and then Explore Ungoro. Replace your deck with copies of Discover a card. Now this might seem fine at first glance. Sure, it demonstrates to your opponent that you're a goddamn gambling badass, but the chances are just too great that it might change your deck into a pile of nasty bullshit. What happens if this card replaces your Cursed Blade with a Discover that gives you three taunts as an option? Your beard catches fire, that's what. Actually, no, that sounds manly as fuck. What happens is you start enjoying Gossip Girl unironically. Having said that, there is something important to consider with respect to this card if you are specifically a flagrant tryhard who only plays in the wild format. I'll tell you why, because, and you can quote me on this, when the expansion rolls around, my patented Panda Brand Juggernaut Mill Warrior will be by far the highest tier deck in the game. And Explore on Goro obviously hard counters Iron Juggernaut. Overall manliness rating, 4 out of 10. Next we have Iron Hide. It gives you armor so you can hit more things with your face. 7 out of 10. Ornery Direhorn. Not only does it have Taunt, but it also has Adapt so you can give it Taunt again. Double Taunt is for double sissies, not out of 10. Sudden Genesis. Now this card is manly in principle because it encourages you to damage your own minions. The only problem is that a manly deck doesn't run any minions. 5 out of 10. Direhorn Hatchling. It has Taunt 
and when it dies, it puts another taunt in your deck. It's like a taunt zombie, naught out of ten. Ah, uh, and finally, we have the warrior quest. Yes, truly it seems that Bren Brode's purpose in this life is to fuck with me. Let's first talk about the reward you get from the quest, right? Sulfurous, the manliest weapon this game has ever seen. It's red as fuck. So red, in fact, that it has transcended normal mortal red and achieved a level of red that our human minds can only peripherally understand. That's not all. It also turns your hero power into a big fuck-off madman fireball. A fireball so manly it does maths every time you use it. And just in case that all wasn't enough for you, the fireball is also red. Unfortunately, the price one has to pay to acquire this weapon is that one has to be a sissy seven times. And if, like me, you subscribe to deontological philosophy, then the end does not justify the means. Don't worry, though, because I am currently working on a way to complete the quest without actually playing any taunt minions. I will release a video about that on the day Blizzard nerfs Dr. Boom. 